So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hope you are all doing well and staying safe. On behalf of PioPetro, I want to welcome you all to today's webinar about effective Python programming for exploration and production. Uh, today's webinar will be presented by special guest speaker, Engineer Johannes Nuwara. Engineer Johannes is now working as a distributed uh, acoustic, acoustic uh, sensing geophysicist in the RITE Institute in Japan. Uh, he holds a bachelor degree in geophysics. Uh, in addition, uh, he had uh, achieved outstanding achievements in many places. One of them was the minus CO2 challenge by Equanor and EAGE in 2018. He had several high rank publications one of them is about integration of rock physics, time-lapse seismic modeling, and geomechanics for CO2 storage, which he will present in the 22nd EAGE annual conference this October in Amsterdam, Netherlands. He had been working also on open source Python programming uh, programs for geoscience and petroleum engineering since 2020 and has been teaching more than 1,000 SPE students and professional worldwide. Besides, he writes blogs about data science and he has been actively involved in his Python for geoengineers uh, community and tele on Telegram. So please join me in welcoming engineer Johannes. I'm sure uh, all are excited to know more about Python uh, programming for, for exploration and production. And on a final note, if you have any question related to the technical content of the presentation, please feel free to drop it down in the Q&A section. Uh, now, without any further ado, Engineer Johannes, the mic is yours. Thank you, Mariam, for your kind introduction. Um, so, hi, everyone. Welcome to the first session of this Python um, training, Effective Python Programming in Oil and Gas. If you want to um, ask uh, some questions or you want to interact with me, you can just freely call me um, Johannes or Nuara or whatever you want to call me. Uh, and basically today we would like to um, discuss um, a basic tutorial in how to start um, Python programming, which is specific in oil and gas industry. I, um, I believe that uh, some of you may be, um, um, you are right now joining on uh, online courses in Coursera or EDX or uh, Udemy on learning Python, they are all good. But, I, uh, but here I would like to stress uh, some applications of Python programming in oil and gas. So how to effectively program something and how to creatively um, make something because that's a quite important ability to uh, do effective programming and um, uh, create lots of um, creative stuff from Python. So um, the format will be in training. I will give a hands-on tutorial uh, using Google Collab. And this will be four sessions started from today. And um, in the upcoming um, four weeks, we will um, um, go ab about different topics in um, Python. So today we would like to um, start Python. We would like to get it, to get to know Python, what is Python and how to, um, how to um, do coding in Python and how uh, and knowing lots of libraries in Python. So basically Python is a programming language. It's not a software. Um, it, is, it is quite interesting uh, because um, some uh, about 70% of people still know that Python is a software. Python is not a software because uh, the difference between software and programming language, software is an ap application you can uh, you can use it. It's like uh, you can um, interact with it. Like uh, Petrel, it's a it's a software, it's an application. But programming language is uh, it's a programming language in how we can code something, and from this um, programming language we, we can uh, we can do lots of things, including making a software. So Python is not a software; it's a programming language. And the good thing of Python is that Python is this open source and it's free. So you can, uh, you don't have to buy Python because Python is free. Python is free of charge. You can run anywhere. And today I would like to introduce you to Google Collab. It's an IDE 
and basically IDE is a, is a, it's a kind of application where you can run Python. There are lots of IDEs, uh, for example, PyCharm, Anaconda, and maybe Spider and Visual Studio. And um, another um, useful ID is called Google Collab. Google Collab is uh, free and it's, it can be run online. So you can run anywhere. Even you can run in your smartphone or your, um, your any other device free. So it's 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 quite interesting to uh, to use Google Colab for Python programming. And the good thing is that uh, Google Colab has lots of memory, and it can run even faster than you are running Python in your computer. So today I would like to um, uh, to uh, to share you a hands-on tutorial on how to use Python in Google Colab. Basically, there are lots of libraries in Python. Library, a library. So, um, in general, I discussed about what is Python and what is an IDE. And um, one of the examples of IDEs are Google Colab, where you can run Python online and it's free in the internet. Later this, this, uh, today, I will share you a tutorial on how to run Python in Google Colab. There are lots of libraries in Python. One of the examples are NumPy. NumPy is the, it's a quite often used by people. Why? Because it does mathematical operations. If you are working with math, you are using NumPy. If uh, uh, people are using NumPy for um, accessing files and do some more advanced stuff, for example, multi-dimensional data operations, and statistical simulations. The second library, it's called the matplotlib. It's a library for plotting. So if you want to plot something, you are using matplotlib. It creates lots of um, graphs. Uh, for example, in, in the oil and gas industry, we know about um, volumetric mapping, uh, how we map an OOIP or um, original oil and place. It uses a contour plot. And to use a contour plot or to, to make a contour plot, we are using matplotlib. And there are lots of things that um, 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 lots of plotting types, uh, we can use the matplotlib. For example, also we can do the um, plotting of 3D trajectory of a whale bore and um, 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 to produce the top formation surface structure and anything else. And also we know uh, there is a library for data processing um, so uh, we are discussing about pandas. Pandas is a library for data processing. We are uh, when we are using Microsoft Excel in uh, Microsoft uh, spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel, we are using pandas in Python. Some of the advanced uses of pandas is, uh, for example, time series analysis, data wrangling, and data anal analytics. The next um, library is called the uh, it's called Sci SciPy. SciPy is a library for scientific computing. It does, uh, for example, um, root finding and uh, other numerical methods. Uh, we, uh, we know in engineering, interpolation, extrapolation, and um, other things, for example, statistical analy analysis and uh, lots of other things. So in oil and gas, all um, all, all operations are, are used uh, using numerical methods and we are using lots of data. We are processing uh, a huge amount of data. So Python is quite, uh, is quite useful. But the most important thing is, uh, is uh, the way we have, uh, uh, we have to, effect, uh, to do an effective programming. Uh, there is an ability to um, translate a problem into a code. And it's an ability to run a program or to create a program in a short lines of code. So you don't have to um, produce long lines of codes if you can um, make, for example, only 10 lines of codes, you can, uh, uh, you're just doing it um, effectively. So it's called um, effective programming. So now I would like to start uh, the tutorial and 
uh, one thing that we have to do now is uh, we connect to the internet and because we are using um, Google Colab to run our, uh, to run Python. So here we can just type um, colab.research.google.com and you will access everything that you can do in Python. So the, um, the appearance is just like um, notebooks and, and any other ID, for example, PyTerm, and it's free and you can run it online. So the next thing is uh, you can create a new notebook here. And make um, and in this notebook or in this um, um, in this in this page, you can create your own program in Python. So here, this is the title, and we rename it, for example, um, session one um, introduction. Okay. And in this notebook, you can do anything you want. Okay. But before you do uh, Python, you have to connect it with uh, with the internet. Okay, and then um, you import all of these libraries because uh, when we want to do something in Python, we have to um, import um, several libraries that I have mentioned before, for example, the NumPy, Pandas, and math.lib. And the way we are importing the library is just by typing like import NumPy as NP. This is our first library that is called NumPy. If you are still uh, remembering it, it's a library for numerical computation. We quite often use NumPy in all everything we do in Python. And the next library is called the um, matplotlib, okay? Pyplot as PLT. Maybe some of you are wondering why we, uh, we write like this, import NumPy as NP. Well, you can, um, so, uh, we can actually, we can change this into other names. For example, import NumPy as your name and as my name, for example, it's as Nuwara, okay? And it's fine because it's, it's, just, a, it's just a naming convention. You can name in, uh, naming it uh, with anything you want, but because we are quite often use a NumPy, uh, we use uh, importing NumPy as NP. It's an abbrevi abbreviation of NumPy. And matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, this one is for plotting, okay? And import pandas as PD as our third library. And um, in this tutorial, I would like to show you also uh, to use SciPy, okay? And okay, so just all of these four libraries are enough for, for today. So we are done with importing libraries. And after this, we can, uh, we can do anything we want in, in this notebook. Um, the first thing maybe um, uh, is how to make an array because array is the most uh, basic thing in programming. For example, I can make an array. I name it as X and um, and uh, the way we are doing this is using np.array, okay? Numpy.array, one, two, three, four, five, six, for example. Why I have to write this one, np.array? So np is the, is the library, it's, uh, it's numpy. And from this library, we are accessing a function that is called array. So this function array is located inside this NumPy library. So this is the way we are doing in Python. We, uh, we specify uh, first the module and then we specify the library, uh, sorry, the, the function that we are going to use. For example, here we would like to create a, an array and we print it, it would display our array. Another way of um, making an array is without uh, numpy.array. We can do like this. In Python, it's called uh, a list, okay? 
So this one will print the same. So this one is um, making a list using a numpy array method. And another method is using list. Making a list using um, list, okay, list. So there are two ways. Uh, we are using numpy array method and list method. Why we have to differentiate these two methods? Because it's quite important to know that when, for example, uh, I would like to um, I would like to copy this. Okay, this is the first method, and and then I change into another method. I use list five six. Okay, and. Um, it's a, it's it's a it's a quite important to know this because sometimes people are uh, sometimes people prefer list over um, numpy or uh, prefer numpy over list so it's 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 up to you you want to use list or numpy because it's it's your preference and then um, we can uh, we have to know how to make an array for example, we would like to produce an array from, uh, from one to 100 divided into um, five, uh, 50 numbers, sorry, 50 numbers. We are using this numpy.lin space, okay? Um, specify the first variable, sorry, the first number and um, um, the last number you want is 100, right? Sorry, this is one. Start from one to 100 into 50 numbers. And if we print the array, okay, we will see the result. Um, may uh, also, we can, we can also produce an array, but may, for example, we would like to produce an array from one. Uh, we would like to specify the increment. So it's uh, the increment, for example, the increment is, um, is two, okay? So instead of using lin space, we are from one to 100, we print the array, okay? So if you look at this, uh, the increment is two, okay? So uh, if, uh, we would like to make an array that uh, using an increment, we are using a range. If we want to uh, make an array divided into certain numbers, we are using lin space. The next thing is, um, from this array, I would like to plot something, okay? So maybe we, uh, we will continue into another concept in programming that is called making a function. For example, we would like to make a sign function in Python. We write as this one, def, um, def maybe, for example, the name of our function is sign function and the input is X, okay? And here uh, we type the formula numpy.sin, okay, x, and we return the y variable as our output, okay. We run this cell, and if we want to use this um, function, uh, we, can, we can make a, a new input, for example, uh, we name it as c equals um, uh, the an array from zero to 360 divided into 100 numbers. So here, because we are using this method, we are we use lin space, okay? So this is uh, the array from zero to 360 degrees, but be careful because Python, um, Python, um, 
working with trigonometric function in Python, it requires that your input is in radian. So because this is still in degree, we have to convert it into, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, we have to convert it into radian. So um, we can use numpy.degree to radian and C, okay? So if we, if we print uh, the result, we will get all of, the, all of the angles in radian. And on this input, uh, uh, we, will, uh, make a, uh, we will convert this input into a sine function. So we declare the function first, y equals sine, and uh, the input is c. And if we print the y or the output, Okay, it will, it will print all of the results of the sine function, okay? So this is the basic of numpy, numpy libraries. The next thing is how to plot these results. Remember that uh, before uh, we know matplotlib is a library for plotting. So to plot something, we are using uh, matplotlib. And here we have already import our libraries Okay. that is called as p to um, um, uh, use a function declaring um, the library first, that is plt, okay? And the name of the function that we, uh, we, uh, we, we use for plotting is plot. We use the plt.plot and um, this one is our x-axis, c, and the y-axis as y, okay? And the second line, we put plt.show to show our plot, okay? So this is our sine function. Another thing uh, maybe we'd like to add some attributes to make it more beautiful, or we would like to resize our plots, we can use plt.figure, okay? And specify our uh, figure size, for example, of uh, seven and five, okay. So we size it and we would like to maybe, I would like to add some grids here. Okay. And the fun thing about Python is you can change a style of the, of, of Matplotlib. You can uh, so I would like to show you this, plt.style. I would like to change my style into another style. For example, I would like to use um, classic, okay? And you, would, and you will see the difference. It's, uh, there are lots of styles in Matplotlib and you can explore it yourself. And if you want to, uh, uh, you want to um, um, search uh, other styles of Matplotlib, you can just browse it. All information about Python and all functions are in, in the browser. You can, you can read the documentation or you can read in the Stack Overflow. There are lots of examples that people are going to explore more and more in Python. Maybe another style is called Seaborn. So you can see all different styles of plotting. For example, this one is also uh, one of my favorite um, style in Matplotlib. Maybe uh, for this, I would like to uh, leave it as classic style, okay? And then for this plot, I would like to um, give the labels. This is the, um, um, the uh, X in degree, and the Y label is Y, okay? because it's the amplitude of the sine function and the title is um, sine function, okay? The sine function. And we can resize our, our, um, our title, we use size 20 and bat 10. This one controls how far the title is from the pot. So uh, I, I would like to make it farther away from the plot. Okay, you can see the difference, right? 
and a smaller size. Okay, and also we can size, uh, we can uh, specify the, the labels. For example, here's size 10 and size 10. Okay, so that's all. Um, this is the basic of, uh, this is the basic of plotting. Or also we would like to um, specify the color as purple and um, add a legend here. Uh, we, uh, we give the legend the sign or um, y equals sign x. Okay. And don't forget if you want to add legend, sorry, this is not legend, but label. If you want to add the label, um, you have to add this plt.legend to make it to turn on the labels. If you, do, if you don't turn on this plt.legend, for example, you, uh, you forget to write plt.legend, it won't show anything, okay? So it's, it's quite important to, um, to, uh, to, to write this plt.legend to show your, uh, your, um, your plot. And um, I would like to restrain the x-axis from zero to six, okay? So X limit from zero to six. Okay, it will restrain our function. So that's uh, that's the basic thing we are doing in uh, in, in plotting. Uh, we want uh, we want uh, maybe um, two plots side by side. We can uh, we can do another. Um, we can make another um, trigonometric function. Cosine, for example, x, and um, this is this is our second function, y equals cos, sorry, np dot cos, x, and we turn x. Okay. So I'd like to make another um, make another array for of uh, this is for our sine function, and another is for the cosine function. So. Um, so C is is quite uh, is still similar, and here y one is for our um, our cosine function. Okay. So I would I would like to plot all of these trigonometric functions into just one plot. We can just add new um, plot here. Okay. For this cosine function, the color is um, green. And I give the label as y equals cosine x. Okay. Okay. I think um cosine x sine x. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is happening here? Y one is it should be the function, but um, np.cost, let us, let us see the y1 first, um, okay. Okay, maybe I would like to um, plot uh, the, the, the trigonometric function in two plots instead of one plot, okay. Um, we can use, we can, we can make two plots side by side using plt.subplot, okay. This is our previous code and we copy it to another cell. Okay, I would like to use um, PLT. So I add this subplot. The first subplot is this one. I would uh, I will um, tell you how to make this subplots, and the, uh, the second one is subplot one two two. Okay. Let me explain to you. Um, this, what does this tell about, okay? Um, in this, the first, uh, the first plot is associated with this sine function. And this one is uh, the, uh, the, the ordering of the subplots. So here, it means that there are only one row, okay? Only one row, and there are two columns, okay? 
two columns. This one is the first column and this one is the second column. And on the, on the first column, we plot the first uh, sine function and we use one because it's the first plot. And here it's two because we are, uh, we are going to plot another function here. So plt.plot c y1 as our, uh, as our cosine function, okay. Mm. C and Y1 um, cosine function cosine Y1 equals oh sorry this is this is wrong okay so um, previously I write it this def cosine X but I don't return it as Y I return it as X so it's it's wrong so return as Y and you run you repeat uh, you repeat the cell and it will uh, it will plot uh, the correct trigonometric function. This is our cosine function, okay? And in this second plot, um, I would like to give a title of cosine function, cosine function, okay? And size equals 18 and pet equals 20, okay? We can... Um, make a distance between two plots here. We can use plt.tight layout 1.2 is the distance between two plots, okay. Um, farther away, for example, 0.6 plt.tight layout, okay. And then we also um, um, add the label, label equals um, cos x, okay. And uh, don't forget to add the plt.legend, otherwise you won't um, get the label here, okay? plt.grid, you have to repeat it for each subplot, okay? These are our, our, our first plot. And the next important thing is um, using NumPy, we can, uh, we can make uh, random numbers. So for example, I would like to generate a random, um, a random, um, an array consisting of um, random numbers, okay? From zero to one into 50 numbers. So there are uh, 50 numbers in an array from zero to one. And this function will generate a random numbers from zero to one into 50 numbers here. Okay, two more, okay, so sorry, this is only this 50. So this will generate all the numbers from zero to 50, okay? So, um, sorry, this is maybe G, um, G equals this and print our array. This is our random numbers. And on this random numbers, I would like to add this to our previous array, okay? I would like to um, add G to, uh, because we already have um, print uh, Y. This is our, this is our uh, cosine, uh, this is our sine function, okay? Um, okay. So because I would like to add an array to an array, we have to um, we have to make a, we, we have to make that array into a similar dimension, because previously I did uh, making the array of one hundred numbers. Again, this one I would like to um, generate the number random numbers into uh, one hundred numbers. Okay, so we uh, this is our. Uh, our um, random um, array, and this is our previous array. On this array, I'd like to add, um, for example, um, 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 P equals Y plus um, Y plus G, G. And we print this one, okay. So why I'm making this, this is, um, I would like to plot, I would like to produce 
um, a noisy function. So before we have already make a plot of um, um, C and Y, this is our sine function. And on this sine function, I would like to add some noise, okay? So um, this one, the another, um, the another array, okay? So I will show you this one, um, okay? So um, G, sorry, uh, Y plus G, or I, I just uh, declare it as noise to make it easier to understand it. Okay, so this is our noise. And I'd like to add some noise to our graph here. Okay, so this is, this is our first plot. This is um, the sine function. And the, second, and the second plot is actually our sine function, but uh, we have generated random numbers from zero to one. And we add it to our previous um, Y. So it will, uh, it will uh, seem as a noise, okay? Noise is quite important in geophysics. It's, um, we are working with signals and anomalies uh, that is very noisy. And um, later on, maybe I, would, uh, I will share you how to uh, filter this noise in Python. But first of all, um, we go straight to another library, which is Pandas, okay? So you, uh, you can uh, actually, you can make a, you can add your own text here. Um, this is, this is Pandas, okay? So right now, you would like to get to know about Pandas. Pandas is a library for data processing. And the way we are um, um, making a data, uh, we, we do, um, uh, we do, uh, we make an, a spreadsheet using a panda. So for example, uh, we, we have already had um, um, the, the X array, uh, so print X. This is our, uh, this is our first, okay. Um, or maybe I would like to uh, make a new data. For example, I would like to um, make an array of names for example, John and um, Peter, and um, for example, Ashley. This is a list of names, um, Bob and um, Ronald. For this names, okay, they have ages. For example, John is 13, 14, 20, 25, and um, 78, okay. And Z is uh, is their um, their nationality. John is from um, 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 Germany, and um, Peter is from um, France. Ashley is from Egypt. Okay. Bob is from USA, and Ronald is from um, Norway. Okay. This is our data, and on this data, I would like to um, create this into a spreadsheet. Uh, into, a, into a table. The way we are using this, uh, we are uh, doing this is by, we type as data equals, um, here we have already imported a library that's called pandas and abbreviated as PD, okay? So the way we have to do this, we have to add PD dot um, data frame, okay? Bracket and curly brackets. So don't forget with this kind of um, typing, okay? Um, in this, I would like to add a new column. The first one is name, okay? For this name column, uh, it, will, uh, uh, it will take an input of X, okay? Because X is a, num uh, is a, is a list of names. So it's uh, specified as X and um, ages is Y. Okay, this one is, is their ages and um, the nationality is, um, is Z, okay? And if we print this data, it will print us the table, okay? This is, uh, this are, uh, this is our table and this, uh, this is the first column, names, name, ages, and nationality. If we want to uh, preview the data, uh, for example, the first two rows, we can use this, hat two. 
or if we want to print uh, the last two rows, we use tail. Okay. Okay. This is this is our um, uh, last two rows. So I would like to show it all the data here. Okay. And if we want to add some new data, we just use like this data um, brackets. Um, maybe I'd like to define um, their um, their occupation, occupation or job. Okay, and um, so John is a um, is a carpenter, and Peter is um is a math logger. Okay, Ashley is a petrophysicist. Bob is a businessman and Ronald is a dentist, okay? And if we print our new data, it will print another column here. This is uh, their occupation. And if you, if you want to add some more data, you can use uh, another, another data, for example, um, the OBR date of birth, 1999, 2002, maybe, and it will print another a column here, okay? The next thing, the next important thing is how to, um, to assess the information from each column. So for example, um, I'd like to print uh, all the data in the nationality column, okay? We print this one, okay? So this one data nationality, it's, uh, it's all the information in the nationality. And for sometimes uh, we, uh, we need to convert this information back into an array, okay? So we can use this dot values and it will print us all this information back into our original array. So this is our original array, okay? And um, okay, so this is uh, this is this is back to our original array. Okay, so for for instance, um, this is quite important when we do in data and analytics or data science. Uh, we have to convert one uh, one table into array and convert back array into a table. This is this is really frequent in processing the data and analyze, analyzing the data and wrangling the data. Okay, and we can do. For example, some operations with our table. Um, maybe I I, uh, I would like to think of another um, another idea. Uh, okay, so for DOB. Um, okay, so here I would like to uh, to to calculate the difference between uh, the consecutive. Um, names, for example, the difference in ages, sorry, the difference in date of birth from Peter and John, Ashley and Peter, Bob and Ashley and Ronald and Bob, okay? So remember, we have to convert this table in back into an array. So we use this um, uh, date of birth equals data, and this one is DOB, and we place it dot values to make it as an array, okay? So it will print the array of uh, of this of this um, of this uh, date of birth, and I would like to take a difference between uh, consecutive years. We use um, difference equals np. Uh, we are again using numpy, and from this numpy we are using diff function. So dob, and if we print the difference. Okay, okay. So it, it will print us the uh, the difference in years. This one is one, and okay. So this this is logical. Min, uh, minus twenty four, tw uh, eleven, and twenty four. Um, okay. Um, for this, maybe another interesting thing is on how to. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So we can also um, 
do another thing with this table. Okay. Uh, for instance, we are uh, making a new table. Okay. A new table that is called as um, a company or, sorry, um, company, company and um, panda or, um, so I, I still think of another idea on how to uh, play with this, uh, with this um, data frame. Um, okay, ages, nationality, and occupation. Okay, um, do, 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 name, or maybe, uh, maybe we can add some more information here. Um, data, maybe, um, company where they are working right now, and Chevron or um, McDonald's mm, and KFC or um, Shell and Vicaryush, okay. And we print the data, it will print the new data, okay. Okay, so um, the next thing is I would like to um, uh, assess, access uh, the data from this table. Um, so for example, I would like to get all the data from Peter, okay? Uh, the age of Peter, the nationality of Peter, his occupation, this, his uh, date of birth and his company, okay? So how to do this? Uh, we are using what is called as um, um, regular expression. So the next task is uh, to print all of the data of Peter, okay? So how we, uh, we are doing this, we can use, uh, we can, uh, we, uh, first we make a mask, okay? Mask equals um, data, okay? Because data is our table, data, um, the name of the column is name, okay? And this one is Peter, okay? So let me explain this uh, lines of, uh, line of code. Here, I would like to get all of information from Peter, his age, his nationality, his occupation. And from this data, I search uh, the name here that, um, that is exactly Peter here, okay? So data, this is our column, okay? And it, it, it equals to Peter. And if we print our mask here, we can see which one is the true value here. So um, the zero, okay? The first row is John, so it returns as false. This is called as a Boolean, Boolean array because it returns as true and false. And the first, uh, the first row is Peter, so it returns as true, and the other um, result as false, okay? How we, um, we get uh, or how we access all of the informations from Peter, um, we use this mask to, uh, uh, to this data. So if we apply data, uh, brackets, mask, we get all of the information from Peter, okay? This one is our all of the information from Peter, okay? Or for example, I would like to, um, uh, to get, um, um, okay, uh, to get uh, a name of person who works for um, Chevron, okay? Because we are searching in this company column so print all of the data. So print who is working for Chevron. So in our mask, we use the data company. This is our column, and this is our uh, this is the this is the name of the company we'd like to search. And if we print this, okay, so it will print exactly the person who works for company Chevron. Okay, and uh, I would like to show you also, um, okay, so um, another um, important thing is 
I would like from this data, I would like to um, to get who was born um, later than 1960, sorry, 19, 1990, okay? So uh, I would like to print all of the names was born later than um, 1990, okay? So this will be um, Peter and Ronald, okay? So we are using the same concept here, okay? But right here, so print uh, the names was born after 1990. Okay, so because we would like to search for this in this date of birth, again, uh, we specify our column, the date of birth. And for this date of birth, we print all of the data um, larger than 1990. Okay, I hope you understand this, uh, this uh, what I write here. And if we print uh, the data, okay, so it will print all of the names that was born after 1990. So it, it's, uh, that's true, this Peter and Ronald, or maybe before, maybe before 1998, uh, 1980, okay. This is Ashley and Bob, okay. This is, is this, uh, this is actually the basics of data anal analysis. This not an, is not a special thing about data analysis or data science. It's just about how we get lots of information and insights from the data because uh, it, is not all, it is not every time about machine learning or other cool names, for example, artificial intelligence. Data science is just how we get an insight from the data. Here, what I did is I would like to search who, is, uh, who was born after 1990. So this is actually uh, an important thing to know from our data, okay? So from this data, we do lots of analysis. Uh, uh, we already did uh, a calculation within this date of birth. We calculate the difference uh, between ages of the names of this person, okay? So when we are later working on well logs or other data, we will handle all of this data into this form of data. This is form of spreadsheet. Okay, so uh, uh, in well logs, we are uh, we know there are, uh, there are lots of logs. For example, um, about density or porosity, and uh, we um, we print all of this uh, all of the data. We analyze the data using uh, this data frame. Okay. So every time we are working with files, for example, the CSV file or Excel file, first we convert into the data frame and then we can do lots of operations within that data frame, okay? Also another, um, another cool library in Python is, uh, is called the SciPy. It's, called, it's, it's not cool anyway, it's, um, it's, it's um, it's a pretty complicated library for doing um, for doing scientific computation, but it's quite useful because in petroleum engineering we uh, we are dealing with lots of problems that requires curve fitting or interpolation, extrapolation, or root finding, and all of these things need SciPy as the library to do so. For example, now I would like to do a curve fit. Okay, curve fitting. Okay, curve fitting. As you know. Uh, we have a data, and we would like to fit this data with a certain uh, with a certain function or a certain curve. Okay, this is uh, this is really um, this is really common in in reservoir engineering. For example, anyone is working as a reservoir engineer, working with uh, material balance data. You want to search for the OIP or original oil in place. You have to fit the data with a line that represents the OIP. So this is the basic of doing the curve fitting using the SciPy. So first of all, um, I would like to make a new array. For example, X is uh, an array from, from zero to um, this, from zero to, sorry, from 50, um, from 0.1 to, um, um, to maybe this one's okay. 
and into 100 numbers. And I would like to convert this array using a certain function that is called um, 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 an exponential function. So here I create another function that is called the exponential or maybe polynomial, okay, polynomial polynomial and um, x, okay, x, and it will return as 0 0.5 times x point x to the power of 2. So this is, this is the, the power of 2, x to the power of 2, and 0.7 times x plus um, 10, okay. So this is our function. And if we print the result of this function, polynomial, polynomial x, okay? And then I would like to plot this x and y. Don't forget to use this plt.show to show our, our plot, okay? So this is our data, okay? So maybe I would like to, uh, we can, we can, uh, Instead of using plot, we can use scatter. Instead of line plot, we can use a scatter plot, okay? So this is our data right here. And uh, previously we have discussed how to make a noise here. And on this data, because it's quite perfect, I would like to add some noise here. Um, the noise I would like to generate from, uh, is a random noise, random noise because there are uh, 100 numbers here, okay? Uh, we are using this, the, same, uh, um, the same amount of numbers here. So for this, um, this is our data. And uh, the second is our, uh, our data after I apply the noise, okay? So this one. Um, Maybe I can amplify this noise to make it more pronounced. Still not um, showing. Okay, so this is our this is our noise here. Maybe I'd like to color it as red to make it clear. This is our this is our data after we apply some noise. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Example zero um, times yeah times this one okay so this is our data here in nature we are uh, we are we are encountering lots of data uh, that has lots of noises here all data in in petroleum engineering and all uh, basically all, um, all all things industrial engineering we don't uh, we don't get a kind of perfect data. It is always um, concentrated with noises, okay? So on this data, I would like to fit this data into, uh, to fit this data with a curve. Because we have already known, this is our, this is our function here, okay? So assume we, uh, we just, so, um, okay, so, um, we assume that we don't we don't know this function. Okay, we don't know this function. Okay, we are completely blank with the function. We don't know the function. We don't know the coefficient. This is our uh, these are our coefficients. These are 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 10. We don't know the coefficients. We just know the data. This is our data, and on this data we would like to fit a curve that most perfectly fit the, with this data. Okay, so um, to do a curve fit in SciPy, we use um, from SciPy, SciPy, I think so, SciPy optimize import curve fit, okay? So in SciPy, there are lots of libraries. One of the libraries is called optimize. Optimize is a, is, is a library to do an optimization problem. Um, if you are knowing about machine learning, it's all about how we optimize the parameters 
optimize the learning of the data. So in SciPy, we have optimize here, optimize library. And from, from this optimize library, we import a function that is called the curve fit, okay? So, and this, uh, actually, uh, I would like to show you that you, if you want to, if you want to get inf uh, some information about what uh, the function that you will, you will use, you can use this help and the name of your function. And this is basically all of the documentation of the function here. All of the information, what is the input required for this function and what is, what is the, the additional inputs here, okay? So with this data, I would like to do a curve fit, okay? Um, actually, we have already know the function, but we don't know the coefficients. As I said earlier, our, um, our, our, I would like to use this. Our function is like this, sorry. Function is like this, y equals, um, y equals, I can just copy this function, okay, y equals, so we don't know about the coefficients, so we call it as a coefficient, we don't know uh, that it is a 0 0.7 and this one is c, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is our function here. Okay, so maybe, um, okay, this one, ax square bx. Okay, this is our function. And with this curve fit, I would like to search what is the best a, b, and c. And I hope that this a, b, and c is equal or at least near to this number, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 10, okay? So the first thing, we define our function, um, um, function, or maybe a polynomial fit, or anything you want, um, function fit, okay? This is our name of our function with x, but because we don't know the a, b, and c, okay? We just type all of this coefficients, okay? So it will return us, sorry, y equals a times x squared plus b times x plus c, and it returns the, the y um, output, okay? This is our function that we uh, don't know yet about um, what is a, b, and c. Okay, but we have already had the data. This is our data, um, 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 okay, x and y. This is our data, okay. This is our data, x, sorry. Okay, so maybe um, it's better to use another variable, um, x data, y data, y data, y data equals, y plus noise, and this one is y data, okay? So we have x and y data as our data. So x, so x and y data are our data that hasn't been fitted, okay? Um, we, can, uh, we can have all of this ABC by using the curve fit function. Okay, so um, we can use this curve fit function. We pass the first, uh, the name of our function, okay? The name of our function is function underscore fit, maybe function or uh, polynomial, um, fit, uh, poly polynomial, um, polynomial, uh, polynomial, um, uh, polynomial two maybe because we don't we don't know the a x and b okay it it can be anything you would like to name it as polynomial or exponential or anything any function that we you you want to uh, fit this curve okay so because our function is called polynomial two so we first 
uh, make an input of polynomial two is our function. And the next two inputs are our data. So we have X as our data and Y data. So this is our data, okay? If we run this, we will see some outputs here, but uh, you, uh, you just have to take a look at this along this 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 is our this is our output okay so what is this this is a and this is b and this is c okay so with this curve fit we have already know about um, uh, a b and c because i said earlier that hopefully we uh, we come up with a result that is close to this number, okay. So A is actually 0 0.5. So this one is, this one is close to one, okay. And this one is close to, actually it's, it's, it's not very close to, um, this one, but it's okay because this is this is called curve fit. And if we plot this fitted function, um, y fit equals um, polynomial, okay? So, um, okay, polynomial um, two with x, our x is our data. So we just copy this, we just copy this a equals this 1.16. And C equals, um, sorry, C equals 52.62. Uh, okay, so this is our Y fit. Uh, y fit is, uh, is, uh, is, the, is the fitted function. And if we plot the data first, this is our data. Uh, we use scatter, okay. This is our data. And after we, uh, we use, the, uh, the fitting, the curve fitting, we, uh, we, we produce with this plt.plot um, x and y fit, okay? So this, this line is exactly our, um, our uh, fitted curve here, okay? Maybe I'd like to color it as red. This is quite important in lots of things in petroleum engineering because you have to fit the data with a certain function, okay. And um, this is uh, this is basically the sci-fi. Maybe there are also other than curve fitting. We have also we can we can use um, another, for example, um, root finding or okay root finding. There are lots of applications inside the root finding or interpolation or extrapolation. Okay, there are lots of stuffs we can do with. SciPy, and this is a basic thing in um, in programming in oil and gas. Maybe the um, the last library that I would like to show you that is called Plotly. So Plotly is a library uh, that is quite similar to Matplotlib, but it's more interactive. So because uh, we haven't imported Plotly, we import Plotly. So plotly.express as um, px. So you can uh, you can write as this import plotly.express as px. Okay. Okay. And with plotly, I would like to um, plot this uh, this function, but right now in plotly. Okay. So the first thing uh, we can use px. That, sorry figure equals px of scatter um, x equals x equals x and y equals y data. And fig.show. So don't forget you have to use this fig.show to show the plots in plotly. Okay. So it, uh, okay, so this is, so this is our visualization in another flavor. So here you just have a static plot, 
but with Plotly, we can we can we can we can interact more with this with this data. Okay, it seems cool, right? So we are okay. Maybe I I would like to colorize all of this uh, this uh, this scatter with uh, Y data to make it more colorful. Oops, maybe color. Okay, color, color, color. Okay, so color is is uh, this uh, this represents the color. Color represents the y value. Okay, and in this uh, in this plot, I will plot the curve uh, the uh, the fitted curve here. So we have to fit um, um, fit equals maybe fit equals px dot plot px dot line. I still try for this if it is successful. So ho hopefully it can run this line. Uh, x and y equals y fit. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe I have to. Okay, um, um, one advan uh, one disadvantage of um, using Plotly is that we sometimes we cannot we cannot plot more than one a graph in just one plot, okay? So instead of this, we have, uh, we, uh, we have another plotly style that is called as graph objects, okay? As go. We can add our own plots, okay? So for example, fig equals, fig is, um, is uh, go.figure. Okay, so this is the this is go dot figure, go dot figure. Okay, and fig dot add trace, go scatter. I think this one is the right input. Y equals y data. Okay, there's something wrong with the code. Hum, go scatter. Um, okay, go scatter. Module object is not callable. Um, go dot scatter, I think. Go dot scatter 3D. Okay, go dot scatter. Um, go dot, yeah, basically, um, I would like to show this curve fit line into this line plot. But um, actually there are, there are lots of methods to, to, to do visualizations in Python. There are lots of other libraries, for example, um, 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 Seaborn, this, uh, this visualization tool is for data anal analysis. And Plotly is for interactive plotting, and we can do lots of things with this, uh, with this, uh, with this Plotly library. You just have a curiosity, curiosity, and an urge to learn something new from the internet because all of the information you can find all at once in the internet, and you can read the documentation to do lots of things, lots of other things in Python. Histogram because it's quite important before we, uh, we, uh, we continue our session next week on the are using, so we have already had the, uh, the data. This is our data. And um, plt.histogram of x. Okay. Okay, so, so he, uh, this is our data. And if we plot the histogram with uh, with matplotlib, oh, 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 okay. So y data, I think, y data. So I would like to make a histogram of a data, okay? So this is a y data, I think, okay. So this is our histogram. 
So another uh, another thing we use in data analysis is we use a, a histogram to visualize our our data. So I think that's all for today. We have covered um, lots of things today from from NumPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas to do basic thing in Python. Uh, we know how to make an array and then make a function and how to plot a function into one plots or into two plots here, okay? And we give the attribute, the grids, the title, the labels, and um, 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 the color of, of the graph. And then we have already um, uh, done on how to generate ran random numbers because um, random numbers is a magic thing when we are analyzing the data. If we don't have any data from the field, we can even make our own data. That is called um, a synthetic data. Um, there is there uh, there is uh, there is nothing wrong in uh, making our own synthetic data uh, because if we don't have any data, we can we can we can make it our own. And this is the basic uh, this is the basic thing uh, uh, of generating random numbers using non of random. And then we also covered on how to add two arrays. So this is, this is the first array and this is the second array. The noise, the second array is our data. We add it as noise and we plot it here. This is, our, this is our smooth and perfect line and this is our crooked and noisy lines. And we use pandas to make the data frame here that consists of several information. Here we, uh, we add some new information to our data and uh, we do some. Uh, uh, we add uh, we we add new col uh, we add new columns, and um, uh, that uh, and the thing that I stressed before is how to wrangle or how to process with the data or how to get some insights from the data. Here, for example, I retrieve all of the information. Who is working for Chevron? That is John is working for Chevron and who was born after 1990. So it will print all of the information about the date of birth of the names that, that, that was born after 1990. Okay, so this is the basic of uh, pandas. Okay, so actually next week we will, we will, we will um, I think we will deal with, uh, with, with a real data, with a field data set uh, that is in format of Excel spreadsheet and we will use a pandas once again to, um, to, to load this data into our Python, okay? And then after that, we have already learned how to do curve fitting in SciPy because curve fitting is a basic and most fundamental thing when we are doing in reservoir engineering called a material balance analysis. We are fitting with a curve to find the hydrocarbon in place, okay? Or in geophysics, maybe um, you uh, you can you can fit a data you can fit an, uh, with a, a field data a magnetic or gravity data with a certain function for exploration. Okay, so we generate our own our own data here with the y with noises, and from this uh, we have made a new function. The first one uh, we assume that we don't we don't know the we don't know the function, the a, b, and c coefficients, and the and the curve fit will will search the best a, b, and c to, to fit with this data. We use the curve fit to, to fit the data polynomials. Uh, the curve fit polynomials. This is our function, and this is our data. And on this data, this is our result here. Actually, you don't have to be worried about what is what does this mean. This is uh, this is this is one of the. The stuff discussed in numerical methods is called a covariance, but you don't have to know it for now. This is our result. This is the A, B, and C coefficients that will fit this polynomial to this data. So after we have already uh, done the, uh, the curve fitting, uh, we plot uh, the result with this, uh, with this, uh, with this new um, fitted curve. And also, uh, there are lots of methods in SciPy, for example, the root finding, um, lots of other things. Maybe if we have another time in the future, I will share you how to do this because it's quite complicated and we have to go from theory 
and then to implementation. And then the last thing we have already discussed on how to make our plot interactive. So this is quite interesting because in data analysis, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to visualize our data as interesting as it's possible to show with our stakeholders or to show with, uh, with, with other people on how to communicate the data and how to get information from the data. For example, here we can interact with data or, okay, so I forgot to show you here. We can, we can, uh, we can, sorry, we can, we can zoom in this, this, this data. Okay. Or maybe um, we can, we can do this. Okay. So it's, it's quite fun to play with the plot literally. So, okay. So this is, okay, maybe, um, so here, then, okay, um, box select this, okay. So don't worry about this. Uh, we can also um, reset access, reset access, okay. So we can download it as PNG or other, um, other, other image format. And then the last thing is uh, we plot a histogram to our data. So actually that's all for today. If you have any question for this session, you would like to, uh, you would like to ask anything about Python or you would like to repeat uh, that uh, maybe I wasn't clear about this part, you can freely ask to me. And okay, so that's, 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 the, that's our final tutorial for today. So thank you for your attention, everyone. will begin by addressing some questions. Uh, now, uh, regarding the regression factor square uh, from the curve fitting, uh, curve fitting, can we get this R factor using Python? Sorry, the question is how to get um, the... The regression factor R square mm -hmm. from curve fitting. Oh, that's a, that's a really, really good question. So, um, Actually, yeah, we can um, we can we can get the um, uh, the metric from uh, from the uh, from 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 this SciPy library. Uh, so maybe you are referring to R squared or or RMS, R, RMSC or root mean square error. Yeah, um, you can you can get those information from this uh, from uh, from using this SciPy. Only maybe I uh, I don't quite remember on how to do so. You can uh, you can you can visit the the documentation of SciPy Curfit, and you can uh, you can measure um, the the um, uh, the R squared. But anyway, we can uh, we can actually make a function that calculates the R squared. So let me show you. Here we have already have the uh, the uh, the data here after feeding and before feeding. So uh, this is our data, print, um, um, print X and Y data. This is our data and this is our fitted data, okay? So the R squared is actually the difference, be uh, the, uh, the difference between this, uh, sorry, uh, the difference between the fitted data and the data, right? So actually we can, uh, we can make our own function here. So, so for example, uh, a function that is called um, square um, R squared, okay? Actually, I don't quite remember about the formula, but at least I did it right here. So this is our data and this is our fitted data and um, um, R, R squared equals, um, because it's it, it is not a square root, so it is um, it is it is it is not a square root. So this one, I think, uh, mp sorry, um, this dot squared and y fit minus y data, okay, and then over this uh, this. So first of all, uh, we have this uh, this data right, this y data and y fit we subtract uh, this y fit with, with, the, with this y data, and then we, uh, we, uh, we, we take the, the power of two from the difference, and then we sum all of the squared values. I 
hope it's a quite it 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 is it is the, it is the right formula for r squared. So if I print the r squared, uh, print um, r squared r squared k okay, r squared y data and y fit, it will print us the error of this. Oh, so this is not this is not um, right. Maybe um, np dot um, this is maybe dot square root. I don't quite remember the formula. Maybe okay. R squared. Um, it must be zero point something. Okay. So actually, if uh, if we know a function, we can we can make our own function and then we can apply it to our data. Even if the if the library in Python doesn't have a capability to do so. We can make a new function, and then we can, uh, yeah, we can, we can, uh, we can do that with our own data, actually. So this is quite important. Uh, R squared and RMSE. In the next week, we we talk about data analysis and uh, fitting a curve, and we need this metric to know how uh, how how good is our curve fit and our our um, estimation of our parameters. Okay. So thank you for your question. question is that uh, is it possible to merge data sets from different sources to match the data set from the printed sorry. To, to combine merge. from the printed sources yeah combine actually no, from different sources from the printed sources yes the, no yes okay your hand is from different sources Definitely. From different sources. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It is possible because there are lots of there are lots of formats. For example, um, a binary file, txt or CSV, or even image. Image is a is a kind of data in JPEG or PNG, and we can import all of this data in Python. Only we have to care about which library to use. If we want to load a binary file, uh, for example, a text file in a notepad, we, uh, we will use NumPy. So uh, maybe you want to search it uh, for yourself, np.loadText. This is a function for loading a txt file, okay? And um, if you want to, um, if you want to export us, if you want to load a CSV file, which we will cover next week, we use this rip.csv. Um, this is pandas, so this is for loading CSV file. Okay, and for um, um, for specific in oil and gas, for example, well off, we are using last data. Um, these libraries that uh, we are talking today, they cannot, they cannot, they cannot load this kind of data. There is a specific libraries you can you can search in the internet. There are lots of libraries that people are developing each day. There are lots of uh, maybe thousands of libraries are developed by many people, and one of the libraries to import, for example, the last file is called. Um, it is called the Lysio library. You can search it for yourself and maybe in seismic data because it's in segwi file, uh, we use some um, segyo library to, uh, to import this data. So basically any, any data uh, can be imported in Python. Only you have to, uh, you have to find first, uh, if, if, uh, if, you don't, if you don't find, Maybe uh, for your certain file, you don't have any, uh, you don't, you don't find any specific library in Python, you can make it yourself. Because Python is an open source, uh, you can even create your own program, you can create your own library to, to, to do um, your uh, your own purpose. So basically, in general, um, any file can be imported in Python, a PNG file, image file, or TF can be imported and it can be extracted as data. 
Okay, so thank question? you. Uh, now the last question for today. Uh, is there any specific uh, book you could recommend to learn Python or the application of Python in petroleum engineering? Oh yeah, there, there are lots of men, uh, there are lots of books I know, and um, I would like to say that to learn Python, there are lots of ways. Um, I personally um, like when when I started learning Python um, several years ago, I started from a course and then I do a self mini self project. I take a textbook and then I try to translate all of the problems. If you have, if you have already heard about um, a book uh, from Brian Toller, it's a SP textbook in reserve for engineering. Last year, I translated all the problems into a code. So it is, it is a, uh, I think it's, it's a pain, painstaking effort, but it's quite effective to, to, do, uh, to do Python learning. Um, but I have some, some recommendations for books to learn Python. For example, you can search names, for example, Jake Funder Plus or Jake VDP, and the title of the book is um, the title of the book is Python Handbook for Data Science. Handbook, uh, Python Handbook for, for Data Science. It's a very, very good book for learning Python. And um, another good book that I recommend, you can search here O'Reilly books for Python. There are lots of good books published by this publisher. So you can, you can search here. So I'd like to, Python is a good book to learn Python and um, it's Founder Plus. Um, a book. You can search it in the internet. It's quite free. Okay. You can access all of the codes. You can practice it um, uh, every time and you can, you can access it for free. There are lots of resources, um, lots of uh, cool resources. You can, you can learn Python from books, but also I recommend you to learn from videos from YouTube because um, um, if, if you want to uh, dig deeper into lots of stuff in python you would like to do a self project you can you can you can see lots of videos in youtube they are they are free you don't have to purchase uh, like in online course uh, um, except that you want to you want to have a certificate in learning python but learning from books and um, um, learning from uh, from from videos and do a self project with a real field data set is the most useful um, 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 a way to learn Python. So, uh, so based on my personal experience, I do a self project, and uh, within maybe two or three months, I can, I can be confident in um, in running your own codes. And this session, I hope that um, it uh, today, I already touched about the basic pro Python programming, and next week we will uh, uh, dive in dive deep, deeper to to applications. But if you want to, uh, if you want some recommendations of Python programming in oil and gas or geoscience, I think um, there haven't been any books for that. Maybe I, uh, I know some books uh, for machine learning with Python uh, by Hos Beliadi. That's a good book in machine learning with Python for oil and gas, but it's, it's quite a few books for, for that. So I think the good thing is that uh, uh, um, Python for oil and gas is a scarce or rare materials, but you can uh, you can uh, you can learn the Python basics first, and then you apply to your own um, fields or your own study. So that's my recommendation. I hope it works for you. all enjoyed the session today to highlight this session has been recorded it will be uploaded soon on Pio Petra's youtube channel and uh, as a reminder please check the google classroom for quizzes uh, quizzes are uploaded regularly so try your best to do them before the assigned deadline uh, you should at least get an average of 70 percent 
of, on the quizzes and 70% on the final exam in order to get your certificate, along with uh, 10 uh, Zoom webinars, which, should, which you should attend live, minimum of 10. Uh, now that's all for today. Uh, have a nice day and see you in future webinar. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And thank you, Mariam, for moderating. And thank you, um, Professor Algarhi, for this um, interesting session. And I hope to, uh, to see you all next week. Thank you.